If you use Elgato Stream Deck to control equipment like your Blackmagic ATEM switchers or other production hardware or software, but you want to have a smaller, more compact kit for when you need to take this equipment to remote locations for live events or live streams, and basically not always have to have a second entire laptop set up taking up space, then stick around and I'll show you my very portable solution for getting rid of at least this portion of your necessary Stream Deck setup and making this little box mostly all you need. So if you use Elgato Stream Decks, then you know how great and handy they are at allowing us to control lots of things in our personal and professional work, like controlling all the lights in my office, or controlling our Zoom meetings for muting ourselves, or in professional live event production where we can control a countless number of lighting equipment consoles, audio consoles, or video hardware, much like I'm doing here at my desk with this Blackmagic ATEM SDI Pro ISO video switcher. But you also know that despite their functionality, Stream Decks don't do anything by themselves. You have to have either a laptop or a desktop computer or some computer somewhere that the Stream Deck has to connect to, be it local via USB or some other computer on the network that's always running the BitFocus Companion software or the Elgato software. And it's that software, usually Companion, that acts as the bridge between our Stream Deck itself and our hardware that we want to control. You can't really just plug the Stream Deck into most pieces of hardware and control it directly. There are a few, very few pieces of hardware on the market that have that ability, but in most cases, we're going to need this control computer somewhere, and it's going to take up space on our desk a lot of the time. And that's usually not a problem in a home office if your computer is just always at your desk, but I'm even often taking my laptop to and from my office from maybe the living room, and my Stream Deck here at my desk stops working during those times when I take my laptop away. But even more so than home use, when I need to use Stream Decks out on my live events out in the world, that's where I just really wanted to downsize the gear that I needed to take with me and have to set up because I wanted to get away from always having to have another dedicated laptop taking up space at a tech table because physical space can be an issue in smaller venues and well, I just wanted something small. So this is my new compact and very portable Stream Deck control solution. And if you haven't already guessed, this is a Raspberry Pi mini computer, specifically a Raspberry Pi 4B, and this now takes the place of my laptop in most cases while running live events. So no, you can't really get rid of a dedicated computer running companion, but at least I can take it from having to carry this to only having to carry this. This Raspberry Pi runs a very specific version of the Pi operating system, aptly called Companion Pi, and it's basically just BitFocus Companion. The entire operating system for Raspberry Pis runs or can run on a micro SD card, so once installed, you can just leave the micro SD card in the Pi and it will just always boot up and have BitFocus Companion running and ready. And then once the operating system is installed, just give the Raspberry Pi power via its USB-C port. However, be very careful in the power supply that you choose because you cannot really use smart USB chargers like these because they're too smart for their own good sometimes and these style chargers will vary the voltages coming out of the USB ports depending on what else you plug into it. If you try to use these types of chargers, it can cause the Raspberry Pi to get caught in this boot loop where it just won't fully boot up and it will try again. Even if those USB ports on those charging bricks are capable of the five volts and up to three amps of power that is recommended by Raspberry Pi. So I would recommend getting the official 5 volt 3 amp power supply for the Raspberry Pi 4B, providing a constant voltage to the Raspberry Pi, and it's that constant voltage that the Raspberry Pi seems to need to be able to run properly. But even though I have occasionally gotten it to run off of these, I wouldn't recommend it. I'm currently running one off of the 5 volt 2.4 amp output of this particular power strip, but it also has not worked off of these ports before. So again, I would definitely recommend the official power supply as your main option. Or of course you could purchase and install the PoE hat in your Raspberry Pi enclosure and then you can provide power to the Raspberry Pi via PoE or power over ethernet from a PoE switch. Then just connect the Pi to any network you want either via the RG45 port on the Raspberry Pi or via Wi-Fi because this model Raspberry Pi 4B also has a Wi-Fi card in it but I just use it mostly via hardwired and then just plug your Stream Deck into one of the USB ports on the Raspberry Pi, and then you just configure BitFocus Companion pretty much the same way you would if you were running Companion on a local computer, and that's through a web browser. So yes, you still need a laptop or other computer to connect to and configure Companion on this particular install of the Raspberry Pi OS, because 
This version does not have a graphical user interface on the Pi itself. After installing the operating system, you only get a command line interface when viewing the video output using the micro HDMI port on the Raspberry Pi. Installing the operating system is fairly easy because you do all this ahead of time on a different computer and you install it directly onto the SD card that you want to use using the Raspberry Pi OS imager and a copy of the Companion Pi OS image. And then just put that micro SD card in the Pi and turn it on. But once that part is done, you usually won't ever need to connect to or directly configure the Pi with a keyboard or monitor. You can access the Pi via the command line if you needed to, but if you do ever need to access that, you will need a keyboard, a monitor, and a micro HDMI to HDMI cable to get the output of the Raspberry Pi over to the monitor. After that, you just access Companion on the Raspberry Pi the same way you would access Companion on your laptop, and that's by using a web browser. Just make sure the computer you want to use to add or change commands and keys in Companion is on the same network as the Raspberry Pi, and then open up a web browser, type in the IP address of the Raspberry Pi that's on your network, then add a colon and type in port 8000, and then you are looking at the Companion Pi software running from the Raspberry Pi itself, which as you can see, looks pretty much identical to Companion running locally here on my Mac. And here's a quick shot of this setup during my last show where I needed to have a very compact footprint. I had an ATEM SDI Pro ISO on a tripod stand along with my Stream Deck, my Raspberry Pi, and a small travel router because in this case I needed to control some functions of the ATEM that you could not do on the ATEM itself and I didn't have space for another laptop to run the ATEM software. So I pre-programmed Companion to activate the macros that I had built prior to the show and saved in the ATEM and I also just programmed the preview buttons and the auto transition button on the Stream Deck as well and now I can have a more fully functional A10 Mini if I need. And of course you can scale this up to any hardware you want. Just add your devices to Companion on the Raspberry Pi itself and you can use this little computer to control much larger setups. But this tiny setup still allows me to configure everything ahead of time and have it run whether or not my laptop is connected to the network or not. I can take my laptop away or it can stay in my bag, it completely turned off and my equipment still works and is controllable from my Stream Deck because the Raspberry Pi is now that connection between the Stream Deck and my hardware instead of my laptop. Now I'm not going to go over in this video how to install and set up your Raspberry Pi or the Companion Pi operating system, but I am going to link to Aaron Parecki's video on how to do this because watching his video is how I got the idea and how to actually do this because he has very good instructions on how to install everything. So watch that video on how to set it all up. And since this Raspberry Pi is running the specific Companion Pi operating system, I doubt you can run the official Elgato software to control the Stream Deck on this system. But if you use BitFocus Companion, then this works great. And I just got an inexpensive case for the Raspberry Pi. This first one I tried had this fan inside to help keep it cool, but the top actually doesn't physically attach, so I had it taped on at first. So I went away from this one and I got this all aluminum one, which also acts as a heat sink and those are around 10 to $15 on Amazon. Now I've been using this setup with these little gl.inet travel routers. This is the Opal version and that way I can always just have a dedicated network that I take with me for my Stream Deck, my Raspberry Pi and my other hardware and I can always add a larger network switch downstream to expand the network while my little travel router isolates me from other networks like when you would need to get a hardline internet from a hotel or venue and I currently have them stuck together with some 3M tape just to make it a little easier to transport and set up. But my ultimate goal with this particular Raspberry Pi is to install it in an A10 mini case build with the SDI Pro ISO, a 12 inch monitor, the router, a stream deck, and then I can just have more functionality in a single case, but more on that another time. So when I'm running a live event, I can just put this little setup on a table out of the way, connect it to my network or connect everything else to this network and control what I need to day after day for that event while keeping my main laptop available for everything else I need to do while running the event and saving me space at the tech table. Then just put it in my backpack at the end of the event and be on my way quickly. And you can even power this entire setup, including the ATEM from a single V-mount battery. And it depends on the battery and what ports it has, but this small rig VB99 Pro V-mount battery has a DTAP port where I can use a DTAP to DC cable to power the ATEM. It has USB-A port, which will power the router. And for the Raspberry Pi, I have a 12 volt DC to 5 volt USB-C converter and regulator that provides that constant 5 volts and 3 amps of power to the Raspberry Pi. And for this converter, I just use the 12 volt DC output on the battery. And anytime I run the Raspberry Pi from batteries like this, I don't use the USB ports on the battery for the Raspberry Pi because they are also smart ports and don't always provide that constant voltage, which again, can make the Raspberry Pi turn off or reboot itself randomly. 
and if your V-mount battery can safely handle input and output power at the same time, you can provide power delivery power to the battery itself, giving this entire system a live inline battery backup. So that's it. This little setup has been really great. I would definitely check out Aaron Parecki's video on how to get this set up. I will leave some affiliate links below to the specific items I bought to get this built. And you can use those links if you want or not, but clicking on them certainly helps out my channel. So until next time, happy switching.